Well, what started out was we were getting ready to do a study on Proverbs 14, 34. The Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation. That means it lifts it up. That sin is a reproach to any people that brings it down, which that's shame. And as I was studying that to preach, because we had the upcoming election here in 2020, and I've heard so many people, in, in, in particular even Christians, as to how their voting was more along the lines of not who they were voting for, but why they were not voting for an individual because of his personality. Um, and that's not the reasons for voting. According to Proverbs 14, we want to vote righteousness. And so when it comes to any election, I think we have to understand that that it has nothing to do with personality. I mean, I might say, I'm going to vote for this guy over here, and I might not like his personality at all. But if his principles are right, if his principles are righteous, if they are lining up with what God's Word says, that's where, as a believer, I have to cast my ballot, whether I like his personality or not. Uh, I might like this other guy's personality a lot better. But when his principles go contrary to the Word of God, go contrary to what is the authority uh, that's given to us in Scripture, then I, there's no way I can vote for him. I can't reason that out. And I'm reminded of Matthew 6, 33, where for the Christian, the Bible says that we're supposed to seek him first, his kingdom, and then it says, and his righteousness. And so a lot of times we see Christians that are uh, very flippant in what they're doing and, and they never bring God into the picture of it. So as I was studying this area of Proverbs 14 and uh, looking at the candidates and deciding how to vote, which was actually pretty easy to be honest with you because it's almost polar opposites. What one stands for, the other one's against. What this one stands for, the other one's against. And it's, it's actually a very easy vote if you're looking at righteousness and uh, what's gonna bring a sin or shame, you know. Uh, but as I was studying that and preparing a message, I realized that God brought something to my mind. He just brought a passage of scripture to my mind and it took me all the way back 2,000 years ago where I began to think, well, there was another election that took place. It wasn't for a presidential candidate. Uh, it was actually for something much greater. And uh, as you go back to Matthew 27, you get into verse 20 through 25 or 26, and we have the setting there where Christ is being tried. Uh, and the two candidates we have there is Barabbas, who was uh, a known criminal. The people knew he was a wicked man. They knew he had uh, a very wicked and evil uh, nature. You know, he was a murderer, they said clearly. And the other was Christ himself who even Pilate declared, I find no fault with this. He called him a just man. And you look up the word just, it means he was righteous. And uh, so here are your two candidates. You have Jesus and you have Barabbas. Uh, you actually had early voting taking place back then as well because the night before Judas had already cast his ballot that he was gonna not vote for Jesus and uh, betrayed him with a kiss and supposedly was a follower, a devoted follower. Um, we see the uh, spiritual leadership of the day, uh, the hierarchy, if you would. Um, you have the uh, chief priests, you have the elders, and instead of being the spiritual leaders of looking at what was right as opposed to what was wrong, they were exhorting the people to choose the wrong. Uh, matter of fact, it says that they persuaded the people to choose Barabbas. And uh, that means to induce with words. They kept telling people, go with this guy, go with this guy. And so we can have, uh, we look at today, we got spiritual leaders today that uh, should be pointing us to what is right. And yet they're actually promoting the sin. They're bringing a reproach upon our nation by influencing the people to choose wrong. And uh, back in that setting, uh, not only did they choose Barabbas, uh, even Pilate realized that it, he was a just man. He washed his hands in front of him. They said, well, what do I do with Jesus, you know? And they said, crucify him, crucify him. And he said, why, what evil hath he done? And they could not give him an evil. They just didn't like his personality, you know, kind of like we see today. We, we don't like this guy's personality, so I'm not gonna vote even though he's righteous, but we like this guy's personality and we're gonna vote for that which is wrong. And, uh, and so we just look at this, that whole setting and it hasn't, we haven't gone too far from it 2,000 years ago, our, our mindset on how we make the right or wrong decisions. But we need to remember also as we look at this, this election, that as we cast our vote, we're not just voting for ourselves, we're voting for the future as well. It's a generational vote. And um, if we vote for righteousness, we're hoping that not only it takes place in our time, but also for our children and for our children's children. 
If we vote for sin, it will bring a reproach upon us now as well as generations down the road. And if you jump back 2,000 years, you actually even see that taking place because they cried, crucify him, crucify him. And then they say, ultimately, his blood be upon us. Now, you know, it would have been great for them to have said that and put a period right there, but they didn't. They brought their children into this decision. And they said, his blood be upon us and upon our children. And if you look that up, it's not just your children, but it goes generational into our grandchildren. And we're seeing the devastation of that decision by those people, the Israelites at that point in time, the Jews. And I think we are under the grace of God right now. And uh, I think it was a, a divine intervention uh, in 2016. And uh, God's given us a, a period of grace and just like it did in the days of Noah, it's going to run out. And whether it's at this election here or ones that are coming, it will run out one day. We know that. But may it not be on our watch. May we be the ones that are always, why we're here and why we have that opportunity to cast a vote for us and our children, may it be that we are choosing righteousness.